Welcome, and welcome to our talk show. Welcome back from our commercial block. This talk show is on health policy, systems, and research. And even though there are several topics that could be discussed, today our main focus is on emerging leaders um, program. And to try to understand um, how they've been able to apply what they've learned in their current work setting. My co-host is Verona, and we are going to give questions and give opportunity to our audience. About two or three questions. And for us, the discussions should not end in this room. We should still carry it on after the talk show. Welcome again. So we'll start with our guests, Apu, Irene, and Charles. Um, just in a brief way, how do you, um, based on your experience with the program, have you used the understanding in your current research and what is the change? <coughs> we start with that. Thank you for the question. Um, one of the main understandings which I took away as a participant in the Emerging Leaders Program was really the importance of listening in a multidisciplinary field. Um, and we went, in our training, we went through a lot of um, conscious listening and picking up skills on how to do that. And I think it's important because, you know, in academia, there's really a tradition of argumentation in the sense that in order to make your point and to be deemed successful, you must persuade or convince someone to see your perspective. And what we learned and went through was a, a process of, of listening. And I can share the example of one session where I was speaking to a colleague who's much more statistically minded than I am. And I confessed to her that usually, or someti sometimes, when I'm reading a paper, I will, if I come across a large ta table, I may glaze over it and skip it altogether. And she was horrified to, to, to hear this. But after discussing and understanding where she was coming from a methodological perspective and where I was coming from, we were able to each take away and appreciate the other's perspective. So I think that's just an example of how you can debate respectfully and appreciate different methodological perspectives. Um, to, uh, from my experience, I can say a lot. I took a lot from the, the EL program. But one example that I want to cite is on team building. I love that example. Because I learned through the Emerging Leaders program that um, nobody knows everything. So being able to, to appreciate your strength and appreciate your weaknesses also is part of leadership. So when you're building your team, you should assess what are the strengths you've got and what are the weaknesses and be able to, you know, cite or point out what are the, the uh, additional expertise you need in the team. So the team building um, uh, principles or exercises was very interesting to me and very useful. Thank you. For me, uh, one key area that uh, I must say, major transformation that I've received from here is about the fact of stopping and reflecting. And personally, I mean, I have been in, uh, in, in lecturing, and I've been doing research. But uh, after joining Yale, I started, and after going through that uh, training of stopping and listening, I came out and discovered that, in fact, there are quite a lot of things that I was taking for granted. And as I tell you now, I do feel that I've gone through a major transformation in terms of even just understanding myself, how I am facing an issue, what perspective I have, and what others will be having. Thank you. Oh, that sounds very interesting. Um, I would like to that the program is called Emerging Leaders. I would like to ask you, so what specifically in terms of your experiences or learning has specifically added to you taking a greater role in leadership in your organization that you feel you can uh, ascribe to the <coughs> Emerging Leaders program? Thank you. Particularly for myself, as I say, I've been in lecturing and I've been doing research, but also I do a lot of projects in terms of what I teach. I teach mainly people and then most of the practice from the, the programs we do in the field. I noticed one thing that uh, my listening skills were not very, very good. 
fact, they were very poor, as I came to realize. When I went back after the training and I engaged the listening skill, I was able to appreciate my team members. And I want to tell you, as I'm talking to you now, my team members, I see a sense of satisfaction of them working with me. Because of the way now I listen to them, but more important, the more the way I appreciate the ideas they bring on the table and how we take that forward. Yeah. I think Joe has almost all my point, but <laughs> 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 one additional point I wanted to make is uh, the, what we were taught to be to to understand your your strength and be enough, the boldness. This is a very famous example in Imaging Leaders, I know. So we were told to be bold enough to stand for what you believe in and you know and interact with others. And with that respect, actually, yeah, I like my work much better because I'm able to stand up for what I believe in and interact with my seniors or peers and um, explain thoroughly well when I'm not understood and um, at least it, it's getting me somewhere. <coughs> yes, precisely. I, I think I want to jump on Irene's point and um, that encouragement which we received to be bold and be courageous and see that leadership is actually not a static thing. You know, it changes. And having, <coughs> pardon me, gone through a training program that focuses on building our inner person, so you, you come to find that it's not just about moving into higher level roles where there's a responsibility, but you develop a, a, a fluid a fluidity or fluidness in terms of no matter where you find yourself in your HPSR work, you have a, a comfort and a confidence to, to rise to the occasion to take on those responsibilities and, and put yourself in your work. And just to add something small, yes. in terms of how far and the extent to which this role has expanded, I would say that one thing that uh, when I discovered that my, 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 team, my, my, my team work with my, my, my team members was not so good, and then after I went and I engaged, two things happened. One, whereas the team expanded rapidly, but more importantly, in terms of organizational growth, I expanded the network. And I can tell you now that I've gone up district level, so I'm also taking a leadership role in organizing the whole district team with a, with a network, which is extending very quickly and rapidly to the county, to the county system. And so I want to think that actually, this whole EL program, what it has done, is expanding our role in the whole sphere of health policy systems and such. Well, that sounds great. So where do we enroll? Because everything you've said sounds great. Um, what I would like to know is what were the challenges that you were, you were faced with once you were able to apply to be, you received all this new development, you expanded your role. <coughs> what were the challenges you faced? Yeah, I'll start with that. <laughs> it has not been easy. <laughs> this boldness, the, the feeling that you're enough, uh, you know, the, 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 the need to do more. So, and from my experience, I've never had so many proposal rejections as I had the past six months. <laughs> because, you know, I felt I, I, I expanded my understanding in HPSR field, and I wanted to explore more, and I felt that I need, I can do this. Uh, but I, unfortunately, things are not as good as, as I would like to be, and I'm not sure where I'm going wrong, but the, the good thing is that it, does, it hasn't stopped my my, my, heat, my passion to proceed. What I think is, is a mismatch is um, what when you learn the field and you think you want to explore some issues further, but you don't share the same understanding with outsiders, maybe donors, or, mm -hmm. So that, I'm not sure how we take this on, but I think it's a challenge to face For me, in terms of challenge, I would say that the complexity does not ease or end with appreciating or recognizing mm -hmm. the whole study. In fact, it gets more worse as you engage in yeah. higher roles. Because what is happening is now there are, there's more demand coming on me. Yeah. And I'm required to even do more thinking, but more importantly, <laughs> do more in terms of being able to provide. There are many people asking questions, and if I am not able to, for instance, as we're talking about 
uh, undertaken collaborative research, say the district system and the county this, uh, health system is engaged. And they're still looking upon you to take forward in terms of raising resources for doing that. So the complexity is continuing to grow, in fact, more complex. Mm, I would agree. I think it's, um, I, I haven't faced too many challenges, but I would say that I think the risk is that, um, you know, you are growing and the field is growing and everything is exciting and you almost want to say yes to so many things and one has to maybe control or, you know, stay focused. It's very easy to perhaps become distracted or become lost and so in order to find yourself and do what you are doing well, I think there's a, there's a, a risk in, in becoming overburdened. I don't think that's unique to emerging leaders. I'm sure there are others who would say at, at higher levels that they, they face the same time and responsibility constraints. Yeah, just a follow up. So what will be some of the strategies that you take so as to stay focused within the field and develop yourself further? What will be some of the suggestions that you give to other Mm -hmm. I think for me, one thing, again, which is a skill that we gained through the year, is the question of time management. Mm -hmm. I learned a very valuable set of concept here. For everything I engage in, I have very articulate what do I want to realize mm -hmm. from that. So setting clear goals and objectives mm -hmm. in every engagement that we get to helps a lot in terms of focusing. But of course, the second strategy is also engaging and having a backup, such that I have, I have, uh, I keep on reflecting on some, some, some of the mentors that I know, mm -hmm. that that they, they, they still seem to have much more uh, load than I do have, just that has arisen from here, and they still cope, and they are coping and they are still doing much better than me, who is <laughs> having a very small role. So I, I, I feel that. Maybe it is simply opening more opportunity for me to learn, to sharpen myself, and to refocus myself on everything I'm doing. One thing that I wanted to, uh, I'm taking on is the mentorship role. Mm -hmm. I particularly like that training because it kind of opened um, um, my deep understanding on how to take that mentorship, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Because with, with taking up more uh, roles, you overburden, as I could say. And uh, so what I'm trying to do is to train my, my junior staff, or my junior colleagues, and try to give them these uh, bits and pieces here and then see what they do and supervise close. So that way, I put off uh, the load of my, my shoes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So similar follow-up um, mentorship. Do you see yourself as a mentor and why? And do you still think as an emerging leader, it's still relevant to have a mentor? At what level do you become a mentor and when do you stop? What are your views on this? Um, I, I think I'm growing into my mentorship um, <coughs> season. I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm not a mentor yet, but I'm, I'm increasingly working with junior colleagues in work that we do, and so I am having an opportunity to practice um, skills that we've learned, more listening, more patience, asking questions as a way of bringing out um, what is in other people. I think mentorship never stops. I think that at any stage of your career, um, there will always be some kind of evolution or something that you are seeking to, to do better, um, and so as long as you're, you're constantly seeking and asking questions and trying to grow in, in the sphere, that will, will, never, will never end. Absolutely. Although we are mentoring others, but I still believe we, I think that I still need a senior person to still also coach me or mentor me in some areas. Um, I have a very good uh, example. I'm working with Dawn in a certain project, but uh, if it wasn't for Don's persuasion, we wouldn't get that funding. So that type of, of relationship I still I think still needs to, to pursue. But also just taking up that that when does mentorship end? I, I, I think from my practical perspective, those that are mentored, I, I realize that uh, some ones have I do not know whether I have mentored or they are getting mentored by seeing what I'm doing. 
but they quickly rise up to the level maybe it becomes obvious that they might require even a higher level type of mentorship. And so in my view, I think that how does mentorship end? Not necessarily really coming to a, a real and a dead end, but I have a feeling that mentorship is a long chain. You, you see, we have like now those who are mentoring us, and then we ourselves, then those that we are mentoring. And this that we are mentoring, there is quite a little bit of that what they are seeing in our mentors. And so they reach a point where they realize this one, then I want to go away with that. So for that particular relationship between me and that mentee, then at that point it ends or ceases and then it moves to the next level. But I want to add, because I think that we're speaking of mentorship in the very formalized sense, and since most of us are in academic institutions speaking about um, being mentored in those organizations, but I think broadly speaking in the field um, of HPSR, there's always going to be different kinds of skills or different networking or different relationships that you'll be seeking. So if you're at a point where you need to <clears throat> be doing a bit more advocacy work. You may be seeking people who can coach you or teach you on how to um, advocate better or how to politically liaise better or how to fundraise better. And so as, as we progress, there are different um, capacities and views that we, we would want to pick up. So I don't think it, it's purely in the formalized sense. Uh, I have to say, I feel the confidence, I feel the passion, and I am tempted to ask, based on the name of the program, Emerging Leaders Program, have you emerged? <laughs> <laughs> do you feel, as, have you emerged, as the Emerging Leaders Program, do you feel that you've got the backing, the capacity, the support? to go and to the next step of leadership. And because this is what the program was aimed to create, is to create future generation of leaders. So, even with all the things that you still need, with the right support, with your capacity building, do you feel that you have emerged sufficiently to be able to take on that role as leaders in this field specifically and be able to, to commit to this field of health systems policy and research analysis? For me, the quick answer will be yes. yes. <laughs> and okay. say not completely. <laughs> the reason being is that there are clear aspects I do feel I have in my One, the passion as you have stated. I have real passion now for, for help and on the system it. service. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. It. <laughs> that one, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Number two, at least the processes that will help me to realize what my passion is about. I would say that at least that have been triggered well, and I, even if I have not reached there, but I think mm -hmm. I have a methodology how to reach there. Mm -hmm. But as I say, it is getting more complex as I emerge. So maybe that emerges <laughs> might be more than more than, than a process than an end. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Absolutely, I agree with Charles. <laughs> because what you feel, you know, we feel that we have emerged, but maybe not what others perceive or what others see in you. I have a very painful experience. Um, in last December, we put up a proposal and uh, the, we, we were not funded. And uh, I was the lead investigator. And one of the comments from the funder was the inexperience of the lead investigator. <laughs> 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 The same, you know, in terms of a sense of uh, legitimacy as a, as, a, as a member in the field, I, I can say clearly that I've come into that. But I think, you know, if the next stage of funding is emerging emeritus, then we might want to, you know, emerging eminences. <laughs> um, so there's still, there's still other levels to, to okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Just, a, yeah, just a final, let's say final question. So this is the first cohort. What advice would you give to any other program that wants to do a similar? What are some of the challenges that were faced in the program and how do you think that can be mitigated for a second cohort? Yeah, I, 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 I won't change a thing okay. from what I've learned. Because mm -hmm. I, I remember I tried to, to take this training to my colleagues in where I work. 
And uh, one challenge I faced was the, the duration of the training. Most of the things we learned in, uh, in the Emerging Leaders uh, program needed a little bit of the background. Mm -hmm. You know, taking us, the lead for, for example, the listening skill. It wasn't easy in the first days. <laughs> I think everybody was at was pissed off <laughs> at some point. So the listening, it, it, they took us in steps, you know, at time to time, and then took us back. So we don't get that kind of timing when you want to do it in one in one sitting, one yes. meeting. And uh, so the timing for emerging leaders program was very appropriate for what I learned. Because if it was more than this, I think it would be boring. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was just accurate. So the timing was very important. Mm -hmm. I would suggest the second court go through the same thing. Mm -hmm. For me, I think what I want to suggest from my experience is that the first cohort, and because we are the first cohort, mm -hmm. and the, <laughs> the, 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 the engagement between ourselves was rather limited, particularly that one that you say uh, a more structured that one could measure um, it is contribution. Mm -hmm. we, 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 because the program was emerging as from the CHEPS activity, <coughs> so that is one of the areas I think that when we were brought in, it was not hit in our head so hard that we, we really need to come up with a system to make sure that it is functional between us. And so that didn't quite work very well between the cells that we formed, and et cetera, et cetera. And I think just making that tighter, such that even we start, people, the emerging leaders start learning among themselves. I do know we have learned quite heavily in a lot from each one another. However, I think there's more opportunity to take that a little more than what we um, I would agree. I think that um, there had been some concerns around time. Some people felt that um, the time was maybe uh, too much in terms of the face-to-face -face time. And then also the ability to maintain the networking uh, in between our face-to-face -face, um, um, time we spent together. I do think, though, actually for our cohorts, and we have discussed it, issues of how we then network going forward um, and sustaining the energies that we have, um, that have been, that have come out of the Emerging Leaders Program. So I, I think future cohorts will probably have to face that as well, but this is, I, I think, our preoccupation. So enough about us. Um, let's turn to the audience. Do you have any <coughs> learning issue, comment, or question you would like to raise to our participants here in the talk show? <laughs> question? Any questions? Yes, there at the back, the lady. I can see you there vaguely. Yes, ma'am, you may speak. <laughs> Thank you so much, talk show host. Um, how would you say you've affected the organisations in which you are based? What have the what's changed in the organisations, if anything, as a result of your leadership? Good question. I think from my, my experience, the straight dancer would be uh, be more bold, more energetic, and uh, as I said, I put up many proposals, and I did in the past, okay. and with all the rejections, but I'm still going on, going mm -hmm. forward. And the second thing was uh, this training, mm -hmm. to try to instill what I've learned to others. I think that's useful, my employer should appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mine, I'll put it in, say, three contexts. One is that uh, through the EL program, I've been, I, I become what I, I regard myself as an effective team leader. And so I have created a team that I think is significantly impacting on the process in the university. Two is the expanding of the network and making those networks functional, particularly with the communities and the, and the subsystems that we're working with, because really in my expansion of roles in, within those particular systems is expanding the role of the university, but more importantly, also interlinking the work of the university with the systems that we are working with. But last, not very least, is my skills in, um, in, in teaching significantly improved. And so I want to believe that the product that passes through my hand uh, <laughs> now is very different from that that passed through my hand. <laughs> I've um, probably gained a bit of visibility.
diversity within the department. And so that comfort and confidence allows me to take on volunteer for more responsibilities and, um, and do internal work um, and take on more um, roles and projects, which I, <coughs> pardon me, probably would not have done before. Yes, do you see the last question? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, oh, oh, sorry. 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 Yeah, with reference to team building, what processes did you particularly find exciting in team building? You know, uh, Irene and Charles, because both of you spoke highly about um, uh, team building. Uh, the second question is on mentorship. In your organization, your various organizations, do you have a formal mentorship program, mentorship, mentor mentee program, a formal one in your organizations? Mm -hmm. I'll start with if the you mentor. don't have, do you think it is important to develop this as part of the EL program? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for the mentoring in my institution, uh, we just started like the past six months to have a formal mentoring um, criteria for analysis of performance appraisals. So with this criteria, you are expected to mentor the next level, I think. So that was very easy for me after the mentoring training. And uh, this uh, um, criteria being put for by my employer was very easy for me. And for, for the team building, I think the, the difficult part is the assessment, to understand who is capable of what. Because looking by, if you are you're building a team and you look at uh, CVs, they can be, you know, <laughs> very deceiving. <laughs> can be very deceiving. So you might hire somebody thinking that they have these capabilities, and during the course of work, you find you are disappointed. So that team building, I think, is a continuous process. You just have to be in a, in a, in a uh, situation where you can revise and rebuild. For me, uh, in terms of uh, team building, one aspect that was um, came very strong on me is the, 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 the how to 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 modify the attitude of the team members, such that you are having some or sort of common attitude. The reason I'm saying that is that uh, uh, and goes back to what he's saying. You see. Because even the competences or, or what people come to you and they're able to do depends so, so much about what they feel passionate about. And so creating this passion is not a very in, instant thing. It takes time. And that, I think, is one of those areas that particularly for, for team leaders need to be critical and think about helping their team members to build. In our institution, luckily, we do have a formal mentorship program. Uh, what as we've done because we are made, we are quite a number now from Great Lakes, where we we have agreed is we are taking that even to a higher level, but we do have a formal structure, and so for us it's about making it even more better and better. Thank you. So we'll take your question. Yeah. Um, thanks for the program. I I think um, that leadership program is really meant to uh, create a breed of uh, change agents. Looking back at your institutions, are there things uh, within the institution or within the department that you thought needed to change following the, uh, the program that you think you can go back and change? And how do you reflect on that change process in terms of how receptive uh, the process will be to the rest of the members of the institution? For me, yeah, for me, the quick one is the whole aspect of, and, and of course, as you said, it cuts across quite a number of universities, is that we take too long for us to revise our curricula. And so one, one of those critical aspects that I think our, 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 that our university, now let me talk about mine, that we have done and I think needed this desperately, is this whole fact of introducing the whole systems thinking in this whole uh, modeling or, or, or training of the, of the graduate, such that by the time they finish, they have really appreciated, they understand, and they have really value for it. And to me, that was very important. So continuously um, uh, improving or reviewing your curriculum to make sure that that is 
taken care of, I think is a very important aspect. I think that's a very, very difficult question <laughs> because change, change is a difficult process. And change within an institution, within a group of people, it's not easy. So I think what I tried to do after the EL program, uh, being, I went back and I am a, a lead of some group, so trying to, to, to share my experiences, trying to be uh, patient and listening to, to others, trying to, sh to, to work by example, leading by example, I think it's kind of making an impact. Mm -hmm. And why am I saying that it's making an impact? Because I see there are now more people who are interested to, to come for this program than before. So uh, I think there was, you, they, they, there's an ad, right? They put up a second cohort. And I'm hearing more inquiry about it than, than, than previous. I think many, maybe people appreciate what they're saying, and I can still see some, some things are changing. Okay. Yeah. Uncle, any final thoughts? Um, I, I would, uh, I would um, agree with what Irene is saying. I think for me much more on the personal and being um, an example of um, the bringing out the personal skills that we learned and that we developed here. and that being integral to doing good HPSR work. And so that, um, through osmosis, you know, rubbing off on people who you're also working with, I think is, a, is, a, is what has been valuable for me going back to my institution. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you everybody. We've come to the end of the show, so let's give our... <laughs> have just started um, and what should we do? Watch this space. More to come. Yay.